All right, hello everybody. Today I'm going to give you kind of a virtual lecture to walk you through a process called meiosis. That's how you say that word, right? Kind of looks like mitosis, but slightly different. Mitosis and meiosis, okay? So today we're gonna to be learning about a process called meiosis. So obviously the names sound similar, so they might end up being related in some way. So let's think back, okay? What was the whole point of mitosis? And if you think back at the end of mitosis, we had two identical cells, right? With the same amount of genetic information in them. And this is how your body makes what are called somatic cells or body cells, basically almost all of the cells in your body. But notice there, I said almost, okay? So at the end of mitosis, the point is we want two identical daughter cells with two identical nuclei with the identical DNA inside, okay? So um, a somatic cell, again, is just a name for a regular old body cell. It could be lung, skin, heart, eyes, whatever, just a body cell. And we've got some vocabulary here. They're called diploid. That's what that word is, diploid. Okay, and what that means is we have two of each chromosome type, one from mom and one from dad. So if you look down here in the lower right-hand corner, see how we have these like pink chromosomes? We have two pink chromosomes. So this like left one could be from mom and the right one could be from dad. We can tell they're the same type of chromosome because they're the same length, okay? Then purple, ah, we have two of these. We have one from mom, one from dad. And then we have two of these, one from mom, one from dad. So you see how we have two of each color? That's diploid. And we have three different types of chromosomes here, right? One, two, three. In your cells, you have 23 different types of chromosomes. So you would have 23 pairs, right? Okay. So um, that was what a diploid is. Two of each chromosome type, one from mom, one from dad. Now your somatic cells, your body cells have 46 total chromosomes. You have 22 pairs of autosomes. You should remember that from your karyotypes notes. Autosomes are, um, you know, chromosomes number one to 22. And one pair of sex chromosomes, right? Those are your X and Y, okay? And somatic cells, as we learned, are made through mitosis. And one thing that's important to know about this is that the mitosis that happens here, when you have a baby, like that, that DNA doesn't get to the baby. The DNA from your like arm cell isn't what gets passed to your baby. Okay. No, it goes to any daughter cell of that cell, but we're not talking about like children. Okay. This DNA does not get passed off to your children. Now that's all well and good, but not all of our cells have identical DNA. Not all of our cells are made this way. And the exception to the mitosis rule is the cells that aren't made in your body by, my, by mitosis are your reproductive cells. Okay, so this would be sperm in males and eggs in females. They go through a different process. We call them the reproductive cells. Another vocab word for that would be gametes. Gametes refers to sperm, and a gamete is also an egg. Depending on which biological gender you are, you have one of those in your body. Okay, now remember back to our somatic cells here. They were diploid. We had two of these chromosomes. We had two pink, two purple, and two yellow. So this cell would have three chromosomes, three pairs chromosomes. Okay. Diploid. With our reproductive cells, they are haploid. Haploid almost sounds like half, right? And so instead of having two of each chromosome, we just have one. Notice there's one pink, one purple, and one yellow. So we have half the genetic info of these cells, right? Here we had six. Here we had three. So they are haploid. So remember back to our somatic cells, we had 46 chromosomes total. We have 22 pairs of autosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes. Ah, ha, ha. Well, here we only have now 23 chromosomes in total. And do we have any pairs? Look, no, we don't have any pairs. We just have one of each type. Okay. These reproductive cells are made through a different process. It's called meiosis. And this is the DNA that gets passed on to our offspring. This is what gets passed on to our children. Okay. So where do they come from? They come from a specialized cell called a germ cell. In women, germ cells are found in ovaries, and in males, germ cells are found in testes, okay? And the germ cells are what make our gametes. So in women, you've got special cells in your ovaries that make eggs, and in men, you have special cells in your testes that make sperm. So meiosis, then, is the process of making these gametes, right? Process of making sperm if you're a male or eggs if you are a female. So here's what you're going to do. 
with meiosis, you start with one diploid germ cell. What? Okay. So you're going to start with a cell that has two copies, right? One from mom, one from dad. You got 46 duplicated chromosomes. Okay. So this is a cell like after interface where you've already duplicated in the S phase. So here's what we start with. It's got duplicated chromosomes. Look, one, two, three, four. We got sister chromatids. So each one's duplicated. Okay. So we have four duplicated chromosomes and it's going to undergo a series of divisions. And at the end, what do we have? Do we have four duplicated? No, we have two singles. Okay. So that is why it's haploid. We have half the genetic info and are our chromosomes duplicated. No, they're unduplicated because they're no longer in that X shape. Okay. So we start with 46 duplicated chromosomes and we end up with 23 unduplicated chromosomes. We start with one diploid cell and we end with four haploid cells. So one becomes four. So meiosis is going to take place in two main parts, meiosis one and meiosis two. Okay. And at the end of meiosis one, um, if you look here at this diagram, here's interphase. Okay. So here's your cell. It goes in inter interphase. So it all gets duplicated. And then here we're at the end of meiosis one. Now we already have haploid cells here. Why? Because look, we started with four chromosomes. What do we have here? Two. Oh, so that's half the DNA, huh? Yeah. So we end up with haploid cells, but notice they're duplicated. We got our little X's. And so we're going to go through a second division now to unduplicate everything. So at the end, we now, instead of having two duplicated chromosomes, we have two unduplicated chromosomes. Okay. So that's the meiosis two goes from duplicated to unduplicated. Okay. And at the end of our process, we have four haploid gametes. All of the chromosomes are unduplicated. Now, hopefully this is still kind of fresh in your mind. Um, in mitosis, you had four main parts, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And then after telophase, there was cytokinesis, right? Well, meiosis is going to be very, very similar, but instead of it just happening once, it happens twice. Okay. So there's going to be two kind of divisions here. That's how we get to four cells. We first divide one cell into two, and then each of those two cells divides again. So this, this is, that's how we get one, two, three, four at the end. Okay. Now I'm not going to make you memorize what happens in every step because more or less you already know what happens. If you're familiar with mitosis, um, I'm just going to give you some of the highlights. Okay. So you still have interphase that happens. Your cell grows, organelles, proteins are made, DNA replicates, all that good stuff. Your cell moves into prophase one. You got that nuclear envelope disappearing, all that good stuff. But here's where it gets different. Okay. You're going to have your homologous chromosomes. Remember back from your karyotypes notes, homologous chromosomes is the one from mom, one from dad. Okay. And so let's look down here in the lower left. Okay. Here we go. You have Here's homologous chromosome from dad that's duplicated, homologous chromosome from mom that's duplicated, okay? These are going to come together in a tetrad. Tetra means four. Does that make sense? One, two, three, four, okay? So they're going to kind of come together in this little cluster called a tetrad. And then notice, oh, what's happening here? These two chromosomes are their legs are going to touch here, and they're going to swap some DNA. What? Yes. So now look. You got one chromosome that's all blue and one that's blue with a little bit of red and one that's red with a little bit of blue and one that's all the way red. Whoa. So at the end of that, our chromosomes are no longer identical. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So then what happens next? Tetrads are going to line up in the middle. They're going to get whoop, pulled to opposite ends. Okay. And then we're going to have two nuclei. Okay. And notice here, are the nuclei the same? No, this is very, very different from mitosis, right? In mitosis, we end up with two identical nuclei. In meiosis, we do not, okay? They have, they literally have different color combos, okay? And instead of having four chromosomes, they only have two. So both are now haploid. Okay, we are not done though, because we got haploid cells, but notice, ah, we still got these duplicated chromosomes and that's no good. We don't need two copies of a thing, okay? So the next part, it's going to basically, the phases of mitosis are going to happen again, and it's going to pull apart our duplicated chromosomes. Okay. So here we go. So 
prophase, if things are going to start to dissolve, right? Spindle fibers, all the good stuff. Metaphase, line up in the middle. Anaphase, our sister chromatids get pulled apart to opposite sides. And then in telophase, notice now we finally have our four resulting haploid cells. Okay. Now, Technically, there's a little difference between males and females. If you look over here, this is how sperm are formed from that in their testes. Okay, that initial germ cell after meiosis one, you got two. After meiosis two, you got four with 23 chromosomes each. Okay, in females, though, when you make an egg, what happens though is that instead of four being produced, like in sperm, you end up with just one and the other three end up going away. And the reason is because a lot more energy goes into making an egg because the egg has to like sustain the baby. And so the female's body like can't put that much energy into making four eggs at one go. And so basically the female, although all those cell divisions happen, basically three of them go away and one of them like gets built up into this really big egg because an egg is way, way, way bigger than sperm. And so these three go away and the body just focuses on putting lots of energy into making this egg big. Okay. So that's a difference there. And then, okay. Someday, a long, long time from now, when you're like in a loving, committed, you know, relationship and you have a job and an education, all those good things, you know, sperm and egg will come together maybe. And a new cell is formed and it's going to have 46 chromosomes, right? 23 from the egg, 23 from the sperm, 23 plus 23 equals 46. And boom, once it's once fertilization has happened, now you have a zygote, okay? And then that one-celled zygote is going to go through mitosis. And so it's going to make a copy and have an identical cell and then that copy is going to make a copy and so on and so on and so on until all those cells become things like brain and heart and lungs and legs and eyes and nose and all that stuff. And after countless rounds of mitosis, you end up with a fully formed baby. So meiosis makes the sperm and egg, but once they come together, the mitosis is what ends up growing the zygote, that one cell, that one fertilized cell into a fully fledged baby. Okay. I want to circle back to one thing. One really, really important part of meiosis is that here at the end, look at these four cells. We don't have a single one that is the same. They're all different. Okay. This is because of crossing over back in prophase one, because we had that crossing over. None of our chromosomes are the same. They all have a slightly different combo. And this is why you and your siblings don't look the same because basically in a man's body, when sperm is made, all of the sperm are different from each other. And in a woman's body, when eggs are made, all of the eggs are different from each other. So even though you can have the same biological parents, you are going to get a different sperm and egg combo than your brother or sister. And that's why you're not going to look the same. Okay. Now our one exception here would be, of course, uh, identical twins or triplets or quadruplets or whatever. Right. And so here's how that happens. With identical twins, that's the most common. I know we've got a bunch of twins um, in the freshman class. Is that here's an egg, gets fertilized by a sperm. Here's our zygote. It doesn't usually have eyes, right? Okay. It looks like it has eyes there, though. Sometime really early on, within the first couple of weeks, that zygote, bloop, splits into two identical zygotes. Okay. Because again, it's the same genetic info in here. And so it's going to split. This is going to be a whole cluster of cells. This is going to be a whole cluster of cells, right? So a whole bunch of mitosis have been happening and happening and happening. This cycle gets bigger and bigger, get bigger. And scientists even aren't really quite sure what causes this, but this zygote will split into two smaller zygotes, but they have the same DNA because it came from the same sperm and same egg. And so this is how identical twins happen. Okay. Cause that original zygote splits now. For non-identical twins, this is called fraternal twins, okay? And I know we've got some fraternal twins in the class. This happens when the woman that month releases two eggs. Each one of those eggs gets fertilized by a different sperm, okay? So actually, you are no more genetically related to your fraternal twin than you are to any other brother and sister. The kicker is you just happen to grow in mom's uterus at the same time, okay? So two different sperm, two different eggs. This is why you don't look exactly the same. Okay. This is how we get boy girl twins. Cause obviously they couldn't be identical. 
Okay. Some girl, girl, and some boy, boy twins are identical and some are fraternal. It just depends. Did they come from one original zygote that split or did they come from two different, totally separate zygotes that just happened to grow in the same place at the same time? Okay. So just to wrap it all up now, the difference between mitosis is you start with a cell that has 46 chromosomes. At the end, you have two cells with 46 chromosomes in this diagram. Clearly they didn't draw them all out, right? That'd be too much. In meiosis, you start with a cell with 46 chromosomes and you end up with four cells that have 23 chromosomes. Okay, mitosis produces identical daughter cells. Meiosis produces not identical daughter cells. They are not identical because they don't have the same DNA. In fact, they have half the DNA. Okay, so hopefully this helped you understand a little bit more about the process and we will go through things also together in class.